Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Today is one of the few days I get to get out of the office. I don't have meetings, I don't have appointments. I get to come out and do what I love, and that is to dig for fossils. Actually, I'm meeting a group of students out here, and I'm taking them on a kind of an excursion to teach them how to excavate fossils and describe what they are. It's gonna be a little bit noisy because I'm literally on the side of a busy road. This road cut was actually made in order to create the road. And so uh, it exposed a formation of late Cretaceous sea life and we'll probably find 200, 300 fossils today. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd take a little bit of time since the group won't be here for about another 30 minutes. I decided to take a little time and answer questions. So let's get into it. Tom from Richmond, Virginia says, Hey DG, I have a lot of questions. Lots of people in my school think that pterodactyls are dinosaurs. Please tell me what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur? Tom, that's a really good question. It's a question I get every now and then, but it's a great question. Um, I could go into some real detail about what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur, but that sometimes makes things more confusing. There's two basic rules that determines whether something is a dinosaur or not. The first rule is that the animal had to live during the Mesozoic era. That's the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. If they did not live during the Mesozoic era, they are not a dinosaur. It's pretty simple. But that's not the only determining factor because pterodactyls lived during the Mesozoic. So then it comes down to the second factor, and that is how they stand. A dinosaur stood with its legs directly underneath its body, like uh, more like an elephant, more like a deer, more like a cow, more like a bird. Their stance is that their legs are directly underneath their body. Other animals that live with them during the Mesozoic, including the pterodactyls, their legs were splayed out to the side. Therefore, a pterodactyl is not a dinosaur because it doesn't fit the two major things. The same can be said about sea creatures. Sea reptiles that live during the Mesozoic are not considered dinosaurs because their legs are held out to the side of their body. Turtles are not dinosaurs, frogs are not dinosaurs, reptiles are not dinosaurs because their legs are held out to the side. All right, Luke from San Antonio, Texas. What was the dinosaur that died first? Well, Luke, that's a very good question, buddy. The first dinosaur to die would have been the first kind of dinosaur. And when we look back at the age of dinosaurs, some of the earliest dinosaurs we know of are dinosaurs like Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus. These are both uh, early dinosaurs that lived during kind of the late Triassic period. So since they were around first, they would have died first. So those would be the first dinosaurs that died. You see, Luke, not all dinosaurs lived and died at the same time. Some dinosaurs lived way earlier than other dinosaurs. So dinosaurs like Eoraptor, one of the first, never saw a dinosaur like Tyrannosaurus rex because T-Rex was one of the last kinds of dinosaurs. All right, Joe from T-Rex Studios in Wall Township, New Jersey. Hi, Dinosaur George, I have another question for you. Do you think some, uh, some of the more advanced dinosaurs like raptors and maybe even Tyrannosaurus were capable of mourning their family members like elephants, dolphins, and whales do today? Also, thank you for answering my previous questions. I felt your answer really solved my question fully um, like you do with many of the questions you answer. Joe, that's very kind of you and thank you very much. And I hope everything at T-Rex Studios is doing well. Um, you know, could an animal like a dinosaur or would an animal like a dinosaur mourn the loss of its young or the loss of a family member? Um, you know, that's a tough one, uh, Joe. That's a very tough one because dinosaurs' brains don't seem to be that advanced based on the work that people are doing when they CAT scan these skulls. I don't think they were that advanced. Now, I do believe that they had the ability to understand the need to take care of their family members. But that's more of a survival thing. They would take care of them. But when the animal would die, I don't believe that these dinosaurs spent much time mourning the loss. I think that they recognized that a family member was gone and therefore it may be harder to hunt or it may be harder to defend yourself. But I don't think they necessarily mourned for long. In fact, I'll tell you the truth, I believe that predatory dinosaurs, if they lost a family member, they might actually eat the family member. So dinosaurs were advanced, 
but I don't think they were that advanced, Joe. I don't think so anyway. All right, Daniel from Nottingham, England. Hi, Dinosaur George. I really like Jurassic Fight Club, and I was wondering what was your favorite episode? My favorite is either Raptor versus Gastonia or Megalodon versus a whale. Well, Daniel, thank you very much for your kind words. It's kind of hard for me to pick a favorite because I, I created each episode, so I kind of feel an attachment to every one. I feel like every one is my, my child, and it's hard to pick your favorite child. Well, in my family, it wasn't hard because obviously my parents picked me over my brothers and sisters because that's an easy choice. <laughs> but anyway, the reality is, yeah, I did have a couple of favorites. I really liked Raptors and uh, uh, Utah Raptor and Gastonia. I like that episode a lot because I think Gastonia is just a cool looking little dinosaur. And obviously I had to like any episode where Allosaurus was in it. And Allosaurus was in two different episodes. Um, so man, if I had to pick my favorite episode, gosh, you know what? I think my favorite episode, actually my favorite episode was the giant bear versus the giant lion. And I'll tell you why I like that episode a lot. It's because that one was the most fun uh, filming. The interviews, I enjoyed the interviews. The people that I interviewed were a lot of fun. So to me, that was probably the most, uh, the one that was the most fun. And therefore, I guess that was my favorite. All right, finally, Maxim from Wurzburg, Germany. Hi, DG. A friend of mine has sent you a question, and you recently answered it. This was very cool, and now uh, here is my try. Well, Maxim, congratulations for getting through, and I'm glad that you uh, that your friend got the chance to have his answered. Tell all of your friends and family out there, you guys, if, if you get yours answered, let everybody know so that hopefully I continue to get more questions, but more importantly, they can see your question got chosen out of all the thousands. Okay, I have read many times about this, but I really want to know now if it's true or not. Were there dinosaurs alive after the Cretaceous period? I have read that there were bones found in Mexico, which are, according to chemical dating, half a million years younger than others. Is that right? And sorry for my bad English. Maxim, your English is absolutely perfect, my friend. No reason for you to apologize. Your English is perfect. Um, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I have never seen any definitive proof that would suggest to me that any dinosaurs made it beyond the end of the Cretaceous period. Now, I do know that there's been a lot of questions about whether or not some dinosaurs lived past the KT boundary. That is the line that, that delineates the difference between the age of dinosaurs and the age of mammals. Um, there are some speculations that there are, I've heard speculations that fossils have been found a little above that line. But from what I understand, it's not really above that line, it's really mixed within it. So it would make sense that if that line represented the time that all dinosaurs died, then it would make sense that we should find some fossils within that line. And that's the best of my knowledge. Other than that, I do not know whether or not any definitive proof exists that shows that some dinosaurs live beyond the end of the Cretaceous. I just don't believe that's the case, my friend. All right, everybody, thank you all for taking the time to write to me. If you've got a question, go to dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you're there, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I have a lot of good friends on Facebook. Uh, to all of my friends on Facebook, it's always great to hear from you guys. Everybody out there, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. Or for you young people, always practice your reading. And I will talk to you again soon. I've got to get into what I love, and that is I'm going to go back here and start digging. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.